I want to maybe give some context with some specific numbers. Um, so Tasha mentioned the differentials. So this is the result mainly of transportation costs between where the oil is produced in Alberta and markets elsewhere. So the higher cost transportation modes, rail, and uh, increasingly at the end of 2015, trucks, that drives a wedge between the producer price and the consumer price because the transport cost kind of eats away at what the producer gets at the end of the day. So if we block all future pipeline construction in Canada, what would that mean for the differential? This is tough to say, and estimates vary anywhere between $5 per barrel to as high as $20 per barrel. The National Energy Board pegs it at about $10 per barrel, and we can quibble over that number, but let me use it for a second just to illustrate some magnitude. So $10 per barrel in foregone revenue to producers, that's gonna really eat away at returns on investment. That's gonna lead to less investment and less oil sands production, a lot less actually. So the National Energy Board, when they crunched these numbers now three years ago, um, so maybe things have changed, but taking it as given, no future pipelines means by the middle of the 2020s, uh, about 450,000 fewer barrels per day in oil sands production. So, th so that's a lot. And given the average emissions intensity of oil sands barrels, that adds up to about 10 million tons of greenhouse gas emissions that are not emitted. So blocking pipelines does lower emissions um, through the channels that I've just described. But the foregone revenue uh, to industry, to governments, and the, the foregone production of the 450,000 barrels a day that wouldn't be produced, that adds up to about $1,500 to $2,000 per ton in economic costs to lower emissions by blocking pipelines. And and then you could think, well, producers elsewhere in the world are going to take up the slack. If we're not supplying the global market, then perhaps Saudi Arabia will. And, and there is a gap between the overall wells to wheel emissions intensity of oil sands oil compared to production elsewhere. But you can't get the implied economic cost per ton down to anything close to reasonable or anything close to what we might think of as the social cost of carbon or a reasonable price on carbon. So us putting a price on carbon consistent with global temperature goals would be an order of magnitude uh, lower cost than blocking a pipeline per ton. And we can use the additional revenue and economic activity from the pipeline to fund other initiatives or to buy offsets internationally or fund emissions reduction elsewhere at a far lower cost. Uh, so I think the two do go together and it comes right down just to what's the cost per ton.